Number 67, Integrated Concepts. A very large superconducting solenoid such as one used in MRI scans stores one megajoule of energy in its magnetic field when 100 amps flow. Find its self-inductance. All right, so there's two formulas we use for self-inductance. It could either be this one over here on the right or in the middle or the one over here on the bottom. Now, since the information in this problem, they're giving me energy and they're giving me current, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this formula that the energy stored in an inductor will be equal to one half multiplied by the uh, inductance multiplied then by the current squared. Now I'm finding the self-inductance, that means I'm finding L. That means I gotta divide these terms on out. So the I squared goes to the bottom, okay? And then the one half you can also bring to the bottom, but you know dividing by one half is the same thing as multiplying by two, so I'm just gonna leave it like that because it looks a little nicer. So now here it is, self-inductance will be equal to multiplied by the energy that's stored. And it says it's a one, excuse me, megajoule, but you know we need that in joules, so take one and multiply it by 10 to the sixth. The current is in the bottom, they gave it to us in amps, so that's fine, but you gotta square it. And now all we simply need to do is just plug it on into the calculator if you like. Since it's early, I'm gonna do that. So, so two times one times 10 to the sixth divided by 100 squared. Okay, 200. Boom. And there it is, 200 now, right? So this is 200 Henrys. And that is letter A. All right, letter B now. Uh, if the coils go normal, right, they gain resistance and start to dissipate thermal energy. What temperature increase is produced if all the stored energy goes into heating the 1,000 kilogram magnet given X Given its average specific heat is 200 joules per kilo. Okay, so this goes way back, right? I mean, this is now just a thermal problem. And it says that the change in energy, or you might know this as Q, right? Because they call it heat energy, but it really doesn't matter. They're all just energy. Is equal to then the mass multiplied by the specific heat times the change in temperature. If I have to, the reason why I'm using this formula is because I understand the nature of what's given. It's given a mass, I'm given specific heat, right? We know the energy. So I'm thinking about how do these things relate to changing temperature, right? This is where the practice comes in and there's certain things that you might have to memorize in terms of formulas. So simply just divide out the mass and the specific heat, look at how easy that is. And this is now the formula for change in temperature. So take the energy of one megajoule, you know we need that in joules, divide it then by the mass, a thousand kilograms, that's right, and then multiply it by that specific heat. All those are the proper units, so it's just a simple plug and chug. So it's going to be 1 times 10 to the 6th, divided by then parenthesis 1,000 times 20. Well, I meant 200. <laughs> Writing in 200, but I'm saying 20. So the change in temperature here is going to be 5 degrees Celsius, basically. And that's it. Now you could also call it 5 Kelvin because of the change. It doesn't matter. But um, that's it. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Okay. I hope this helped. hope you're doing well in your class so far. And I will see you, I guess, in the next video. Or I'll talk to you in the next video. I won't necessarily see you, but you know what I mean. Be well.